Okay, so it is working. Uh, so my name is Linda Conley, and I'm, I live in town. I live on Pleasant Street. Um, today is September 19th, 2013, which is amazing. And I'm talking with Carolyn Holman of Ash Street um, and her daughter, who is Gail Remby. Um, the interview will be included in a collection of a lot of interviews. We hope to get many. And it's going to be part of this, an oral history project that the, um, the CPC has, has funded for the Historical Commission. Oh. And the idea is that by the 300th anniversary, uh, anniversary yeah, of the town that they have many, many of these recordings yeah. so that um, we can share information with people who are new to the town or in the future with people who just don't have any idea what Hopkinton was like in the past yeah. because it is changing yeah, so sure rapidly. Was. So, um, Carolyn, if you could tell us about how long have you been here? and, and 1960. 1960. 1960? And, and you tell me where you grew up and because you I were nearby. Up, I grew up in uh, Hopedale. Went to school, graduated from high school. And then I went into training. No, I went a year to college. Then I went into training. And so I worked. To be a nurse. Yeah. Yeah. I worked at, uh, at Framingham Union. That's where I was born, yeah. And then I guess I got married soon after. And um, I was allowed to work one day a week. <laughs> My husband wanted me home. <laughs> Just one day a week? Yeah. And that's this is when you're living in Ashland? This no, is before you came? Here. Oh here, okay. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I found myself pregnant. I couldn't understand how. <laughs> and my husband says, Well, you know what they say, you have three, you'll probably have a fourth too. So, <laughs> so did you have how many children did four. you have? You had four? And have you been in this house at this address for since 1960? Yeah. Yeah. So this was just a, a rough porch with flag of uh, stone stones. And you, the house is an old house, right? Huh? This is an old house, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know when it was built? About. It's over 200 years old, I think. It's older. You oh. can talk too. Can you stop? Sure. Okay, so we were we, we put the camera off, but we were debating on the on the age of, of the house. And you're thinking it m might be 250 years old? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I didn't just one thing I wanted to add was there's fo there's a photograph that the library has taken in I think the 1880s or 1890s yeah. from a church steeple on Church Street. The church is no longer there. It's not the Catholic Church. And it's you can see Ash Street because it's so high, and it, it appears that this is the only house that you can see. There's nothing oh, really? this way and nothing that way, but at your house. Because all the ones I've seen, it stops at the one next door. Yeah, yeah. I could be wrong, but I have to show you that. I have to go so there. tell, and can you tell us about the addition, an L-shaped addition off the back of this house that burned in a fire at some point in time, but there was an addition in the back of the house, so. Did you want to talk about what you found with the fire when there was a fire? I was very, I was only second grade, so I don't remember. They found a bill from a milkman. They found a bracelet. Yeah, a, a black onyx bracelet. <gasps> really? Wow. And a newspaper In the wall. clipping. Huh? A newspaper clipping. Yeah. Uh, Salem Gazette, 18 something. I think I, I made the mistake of putting it in a plastic bag. However, I didn't know not to because unless it was acid. Right. So you could read the whole thing, but... Right, so is it kind of crumbling or... Yeah. Or, yeah. So... Um, Can you talk about Hopkinton in 1960 and what it, what, yeah. what it was like, what you remember? Yeah. And how it might be different? Well, that house wasn't there. It was a nice lot. And so across the street, Sybil's, Sybil's yeah, house. Two yeah, house, two people, families ago, built that house. 
and well, you could cross Main Street until th about three o'clock. Then, uh, so that, not not a lot of traffic. Is yeah, that what you're saying? No, Quiet. Yeah. Until about three, when they were getting out of uh, work at uh, uh, GE Telecron. Yeah, Telecron. But that was in business. In town? When it was in Ashland. Oh, in Ashland. Yeah. But by quarter of four, the traffic yeah. coming up through from Ashland was terrible. Not compared to today's not standards. Not today, but, no. but on 135. 135. Yeah. And there were no lights in the center of town by Colellas. So you cross the street at your own risk, and there was no lights down by the daycare center down on Wood Street. But that was more recent, the lights went in there. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, they all went to school here. Graduated from Hopkinton. So all, all four kids did? Yeah. yeah. And it was just the center school and the high school. It was grades one through four, because there was no kindergarten, unless you went to private kindergarten. Yeah, one through that. four was down at center school. 5 through 12 was at the high school. Mm -hmm. And then when I went into third grade, Elmwood School had just opened, and it was grades 3 through 6. So, so you went into Elmwood as a brand new school. I was a brand new school. Do brand you know what school. year that was, about? One third grade? 1964, about? No, yeah. was, we moved to town, and my mother thought the starting age for first grade was the same as it was in Ashland, so she kept me back a year at home and then sent me to first grade. So I was one of the older, mm -hmm. oldest in my class. I was 18 during my Didn't senior you go to kindergarten, project, church. kindergarten. Little Folk Farm. Oh, yeah. That's, That's where good. my son went to Little Folk Farm as a preschool recently. In Ashland. You know, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I know Little Folk Farm. So, and then, so my class, class of 74, was the first class that went through Elmwood School all three years. And then 7 through 12 was up at, which is, which is now the junior high school, was the high school for us. So we had two schools in town. Mm -hmm. And the gym class was held down at Center School when you walk out of the... Uh, cafeteria, there was a little landing, and anybody who's been in that school will know when you walk out of the cafeteria, there's a small landing, that's where we had gym class up when it was, the weather was inclement mm -hmm. in the winter time. Mm -hmm. And the dress code, of course, was dresses only, you never wore pants except mm -hmm. to gym class, and when I was in 7th or 8th grade, there were students working on changing the dress code, and it went through so you could wear pretty much anything and I just couldn't been wearing dresses for so many years that I couldn't bring myself to wear pants to school for a while but you had to wear dresses you couldn't wear slacks mm -hmm. and the gym classes you wore uniforms green uniforms one piece very <laughs> stunning so I'm the same age as you are I had a similar experience in my time I remember the gym the gym uniforms, button on, or whatever, snaps. Snaps? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Very stunning. Do you have, did your husband work locally or, or no, how far? He for Delta Airline. So he would leave here different times. One morning he had to leave by. So he commuted to Boston. Huh? He'd commuted to Boston. Yeah. Yeah. Daily. Yeah. He says, he said goodbye, and then he gave me a kiss, and, and he said, boy, I'd hate to go to work for a living. <laughs> he just loved it so much. He did have 31 missions over in Germany, and came back, and I forget, he was 21, yeah. So... So when he drove to, um, there was no Mass Pike at that time. No. Yeah. Right down nine. Yeah. Route nine, huh? Yeah. I at that, those days I worried more about him driving in than flying. Than flying. <laughs> That's interesting. I knew he was a good pilot. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
do you have any stories about Hopkinton and you know what kind of events that took place in the town, the parades and the clubs and well, they used to, the Horrible Day parades were bigger to do than they are today. We had more participants and Fourth uh, of July. Oh, on the Fourth of July and. Yeah. Um, Gail, do you, do you want to sit over here? I, can I put my chair right over here? Sure. Sure. You, so you'd be more yeah, comfortable. Well, sure. Want me to move it? Yeah, I'm going to stop it no, for a second. Yes, let's get braids. Oh. Yeah, so we're back again. This is, and um, now we can see Gail. And we were talking about, yeah, the Horribles Parade, how they were a little bit. Yeah, they used to have some good parades. Yeah. I remember working on a float out front here, I think it was, for one parade. And we had a, quite a few people on it. And uh, anyway, that was fun. In another event, they had starting as long as I can remember, was Kitty's Day, and that was usually in September. And it would be in the parking lot of the then high school, and they'd have um, doll carriage parades. Everybody decorated their doll carriages. And bicycle parades, and the kids decorated their bicycles. And there was always that child that had the million-dollar doll carriage that you know never <laughs> did a thing. It was the parents doing it all. Yeah. But we had more fun decorating our doll carriages for this Kitty's Day Parade and they had rides and candied apples and cotton candy and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Was it a competition? Somebody win for the best Somebody, they the won best prizes baby carriage? for the best yeah. baby carriage, best bicycle. Um, I don't know, I never won, but I had fun. Yeah, yeah little and, girls um, don't have play with baby carriages much anymore. No, huh? I yeah. had a, my doll carriage pushed, used to walk out my baby dolls um, used to sit on the lawn with basins of water and give them baths, and yeah. we played. Yeah. We yes. were never indoors. We were yeah. always outdoors playing from yeah. the time we got up till bedtime. Mm -hmm. yeah. My mother's yard was the neighborhood gathering at night. We'd start off with kickball, softball, and as it got darker, we progressed to hide and seek and. Everybody was here playing until yeah. late at night. Yeah, that's good. a lot of fun. Good memories growing up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kids don't do that today. Yeah, yeah, much more structured. Yeah. You don't see any kids out at all, do you? They're busy doing things. They're they're busy, they're, they're busy yeah, but they're not just playing outdoors. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. my been so, my experience. Well, anyway. right, let me see what else. Um, Home entertainment? You know, what would you do for home entertainment? Well, we watch TV. We had the first color TV back in, I don't exactly remember the year, but yeah. my dad called us down one morning and, to look at the television, and we knew it was brand new, but we'd never seen color TV, so we had one of the first color TVs. People were orange, and <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, we played cards. Yeah. We played outside in the summertime. Um, we did out in the wintertime, too. Yeah, we played out in the wintertime. Played, played snow, snow yeah. forts, and again, the neighbors were always here. But, well, we had that blizzard. Blizzard of 78. Yeah. The next door made a uh, good size of... Uh, dragon? Dragon. And colored it with food coloring, and they worked on it a long time, but yeah, it was quite good, so. Yeah, that was an was amazing storm. We'd walk, get our sleds out, walk to Colella's, drop in the snow in the street. And Dale Colella tells a story, if I remember it correctly, that they had to close the store. Her father was out in Vegas on vacation, and he said, what do you mean you close the store? You've got to reopen the store. The people need and there was a ban on no driving, and they were very strict about that. So we would walk down to Colella's. At the time, I was in college. I was in my senior year at Fitchburg State, and there was a need for platelets. So a 
the gentleman on the civil defense picked up my neighbor and myself and drove us into uh, the Red Cross in Boston to donate platelets, platelet pharesis. And we were stopped every light on Route 9 into Boston. There were state troopers stopping people because you absolutely could not drive. Mm -hmm. And he'd have to show his credentials so we could get through to get into Boston and come back out. Yeah, yeah. That was some small stone. It was. What else, Carolyn? Can you talk about any of the different businesses downtown in Main Street? Um, so you talk about Colella's. Colella's has been there for yeah, some time, but there. but there was a a uh, woman next door on the uh, oh Osborne's. Osborne's. Can you talk a little bit about Osborne's? Yeah, it was a nice little country store. You had everything you needed. Yeah, you could buy fabric in there. Because uh, Connie... Is, is it where Hopkinton Drug is now? No, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, it used to be that I can remember Hopkinton Drug, yeah. then there was a barber shop. Oh, yeah. I believe there was a taxi, s small s taxi building, mm -hmm. and then Woods Superette. Yeah, it used to be Woods Supermarket. And it was, they had the best hamburger, oh, yeah. but it was a small family-run grocery store. Mm -hmm. And then that closed and when they wanted to move the airport out here yeah. they took Woods Superette was now the headquarters for people fighting against having the, the jet port right the jet yeah. port put in here and um, I don't remember a lot about that but yeah. we put up a fight or the townspeople yeah. did to prevent that from coming but that used to be a Superette and then it became uh, there was at one time King's Rook, it was a oh. restaurant, bar area, yeah. and then Osborne's, you could get candy and yeah. you name it, you could get anything and there. Yeah. I remember Nana and I walked down, down to it, um, I was going to put curtains up and we had to get some rods or something down there. But they, so they didn't have food, no food, but it was just no like food, a, what do you call it? Like novelty. A dry goods, I guess, no, in the old days. No. Goods, no. Um, there wasn't a restaurant here, was there? Across the street, where, oh. directly across from Colella's, there was an old oh. brick, uh, wood building that had the post office was there. There was a, bill, a store called the Hawkington Shop, which. Yeah. They had clothing, they had jewelry. You know, went up a couple of steps to get in there. And directly in front of that was a restaurant called Hutch's. Oh, yeah. I and about that. my husband has stories about going in there and having fried egg sandwiches before going to work in the morning. And my friend and I walked down one day and had spaghetti and meatballs in breakfast. No, oh. breakfast. <laughs> but just it was a small restaurant. Yeah, it was like right that. in front of current gas station next to Sovereign Bag, right in there. Right, and where the next door to where the, the, the liquor store is now. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. there was also Brown and Smith's, which oh, yeah. is now Bill's. At the top of the hills, yeah. Um, it was kind of a April Fool's. Somebody, a kids, would get up on the roof of Brown and Smith's and change the letters around so it said Brown and. And um, right next door was another pharmacy run by a man named Murphy, I believe. So there was another pharmacy yeah. in town. Was it a pharmacy with a um, a soda counter? Could no, you get no? They didn't have a soda counter. In between. Um, the pharmacy in Brown and Smith's was another bank. Um, was it Hopkinton Savings? But Kate's drugstore did have a soda fountain. You could go in and sit and get a sundae or coffee or whatever. So they did have mm -hmm. a soda fountain there. And next to the library, which is now part of the library, used to be St. Paul's Church. Yeah. Until they moved down. On Wood Did you go to a church in the town? I went to the Congregational Church in yeah. Washington. Yeah. yeah. The current Korean church. Right. Um, now it's, it's 
of Faith down on down West, the street. West Main Street. The hall. So, Carolyn, did you were you in any any clubs or organizations in the town? Yeah. Um, let's see. Choir. Huh? You were in the choir? Yeah, I was in the choir. We all, all three of us were Gail and Jeff Gail and Jill and I. It's up front, so we tried to behave. <laughs> But they had a good, good size congregation then. Anyway. Yeah, smaller town, smaller town. I was looking at town. yeah, yeah. I started singing choirs when I when I lived in Hopedale, because they paid you fifty cents a Sunday. So they like, paid you to sing in the choir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hopedale was run by Draper Corporation. That's a little town. I mean, this was little, but this was big, bigger than Hopedale. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, some nice things over there, too. Mm hmm Yeah, it's a pretty town, too. Huh? That's a pretty little town, also. Yeah. Not as changed as this one. Remember the a woman that was a librarian at the school, and we had a one period a week, I guess, and Miss Sombarger, and she had fourth soul, biggest legs you ever saw, all the way down. <laughs> this is in Hopedale. Yeah. Yeah. So. So that's a, where you you graduated from from Hopedale yeah. High School. Yeah. That's a nice town too. Mm -hmm. My father was cashier of the in the office. And after he died, my mother went to work in the office. And I went to work in the shop in the uh, blueprint department. So if anybody wanted a blueprint, they'd come and tell me. I remember one time I had a permanent. And I got in there the next day. And one of the guys said, did you put your finger in a socket? Nice, huh? <laughs> So why did you decide to come to Hopkinton? Well, we moved in with my mother when after we got married. And she was alone. And in that in Ashland or here? Ashland. In Ashland. And uh, then we figured it was about time we found something. And we I saw this uh, advertised in the paper. So I made an appointment. She and I came up and went through it, and uh, the Jolly liked it. It was owned by the Arms family? Yeah, Arms family. And they owned the house next door also? Yeah, and one of them lived up on Fenton Street, too, mm -hmm. at one time. The house with the farmer's porch? Yes. That, that's, yeah. Haynes. Haynes, right. Owner, yep. owns it. Yeah. Yeah, that's an, there's an interesting history to that house, that's, too. Yeah. They're both gone now. And I miss Claudie. So they were old time residents also? They had been here no, for a long they time? Came, they came after, after us, I okay. weeks after we got here. Yeah. The youngest, Joe, was in my class all through high school. So he had older brother and sister. So that was good. They were nice neighbors. And uh, she, she taught piano and played very nicely. Oh, let's see. I think we're the oldest um, people that have been in the neighborhood. So, oldest. yeah, so you've been here 60, 60 yeah. 62 years, 63 years. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about the what you see as changes happening here now? You know, with oh, the more. Yeah, they've got know? some beautiful homes. But I liked it before. Yeah. School sizes. I think I had 92 in my graduating class. You knew everybody. You knew everybody, and that yeah. was part of the problem, too. Everybody seemed to know what you did on the weekend when you got back to school, <laughs> especially Mr. Doyle. We always wanted to know his source, how he found out what we did on the weekends, but he knew. 
Was he a math teacher? What he did was he? a yeah. math teacher, very good math teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes. Aubrey, right? Aubrey Doyle, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, well, is there anything else you can think of? Any stories? or? Uh, well, we had a fire the first uh, day they were on vacation in February. February of 63. 63. I was going to bathe Dean in the tub, and I could smell smoke coming up. So I came down and touched the door and it was not hot, so I opened it and I could see underneath the kitchen. Well, that, all we had was a volunteer fire department. And I tell you, they were great. And the neighbor across the street, even though he was drunk most of the time, he came over with a whole bunch of plastic to put on the uh, beds. So, and, and it, um, oh, Alice uh, Lazard lived over there, mm -hmm. and she came over, and I gave her my my jewelry to take, and I had to put a coat on. I had a cashmere coat with a fur collar. I'll put that on because I'll never get another one. <laughs> and what, but everybody was so helpful. What do you remember, Gail? Um, you must have been really little I then, was, huh? I was in second grade. I was with my mother when she opened the basement door and the smoke was coming up. So she called the fire department and she'd get coats on and we were still in our pajamas. It was the first day of school vacation. And we ran next door and I remember my sister, the first thing she picked up was a big cardboard box of paper dolls. Yeah. And she and I remember running down the street to the next door neighbors and knocking on the door and she said, what are those kids doing over here so early? Because it was about seven in the morning. Yeah. And um, that's what I said when the doorbell rang. It was an electrical short yeah. in the system. So um, the fire department, you can't say enough good things about them. Oh, I know. They um, cut holes in the roof in the attic and the house was almost a total loss and would have been in a yeah. short period of time but um, that went from the kitchen up through the head of my oldest son's bedroom. Wow, very lucky. Bit the billow out on the attic. But they took care of it. They did a good job. We had a 50 foot trailer placed in the backyard and my a family of six lived out there from February until I think September or October. It was quite interesting. I'm glad we were young. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was kind of an adventure. Yeah, that's Not certainly so much different. Not today. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. But that was a, that was a, I hope I never have to do it again. But at the time, my father took off quite a bit of time from work to they had to gut the house, and that's when they found some jewelry, a bill for a milkman, a newspaper clipping, and um, did some changes in the house, renovations, and um, this was a set of windows, and this was a summer kitchen. Mm -hmm. There really wasn't anything but flagstone floor, but at one time, I guess they did their cooking out here. When it, was too, when it was too, too hot to be in the house. Mm -hmm. And then my dad, probably when I was in junior high, converted this into a porch. And then a couple of years ago, my husband, I love this room, mm -hmm. remodeled this. So, I'm out here all the time. So, um, so you brought your children up in Hopkinton too. I did. So you got a lot of, you know, two generations, three generations. I was in third grade, the 250th anniversary, yeah. and my mother made dresses for my sister and I and one for herself, a colonial gingham dress. And um, they had, I remember, a contest for the man that could grow the best beard. And I think my friend Donna McIntyre, her father, John, worked for the postal service yeah. in town and later took over as the postmaster general for a while. I think he won. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah. men were growing beards for this, and everybody dressed 
in yeah. the entire of that time period. I, did, I didn't make anything for Dean, but I had him put on a pair of black pants and it pulled white socks up. Mm -hmm. And we had a three-cornered hat and he wore. And then when my youngest was about two, um, they had the 275th, and my mother made dresses for my two daughters, and we did the tricorner hat and so forth for my son. So it's been a while. So, Carolyn, you sew? You used to sew? I was sewing. Yeah? Yeah. I've taken classes with Bertha Meissen. I don't know if you know her. She lived her at the corner of Fenton Street and Ash. She was a terrific seamstress. Anyway. Did you make the ha Halloween costumes for your kids? Did you make Halloween costumes? Uh, my dad did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he did. He would make us sometimes. So, but in those days, you didn't have store-bought costumes. Yeah. You would get a sheet and put yeah. holes in the eyes. And then my mother would be, who cut holes in my bedroom sheets <laughs> and we take a cork and burn it and then make a hobo by blackening your face and it's a lot of fun you just yeah. use your imagination and made your own costumes and then that you could go out for hours on Halloween trick-or-treating and not worry about somebody poisoning your candy yeah. or you know your mother didn't have to look over everything to make sure it was all right or who did you get it from my mother-in-law used to make cookies and give out cookies, and that was okay. So your mother-in-law was in town, too? My mother-in-law is yeah. Gertrude Remby. She lived up on Hayden Row, 204 Hayden Row, raised 10 children. On Hayden Row? On Hayden Row, yeah. 204, yeah. Um, her husband was uh, fell off a building. He was a steel worker, and her oldest, I think, was 17, and her baby was 2. And she had 10 children to raise on her own. Wonderful, wonderful she, woman. She was a wonderful. She was wonderful. very involved in yeah. the Catholic Church today. Probably a lot of people don't know her yeah. name, but she was a worker. A worker, very involved with the church, extremely involved, and did seem was a seamstress and cooked for Pine Street in yeah. Boston, the halfway house, and down with her Michael Richlit. What's the center down by Hopkinton Lumber? Uh, Michael. Right, I know, the, right, the, right, the hospice center. The hospice yep. center. Yeah. Used, it was an older home, and it used to be called Hospitality House. And they would have people recovering from alcohol or drugs. That's where they lived, and they had counseling sessions there. And my mother-in-law was very active in providing whatever food they or needed. whatever they needed. Yeah. She was there to help. So your husband's still in town. Of, of his siblings, all his siblings, or any, anybody else still in Hopkinton? Um, no. His brother Jimmy was married to Connie Remby. She was a third grade teacher in town for many, many years. Okay. They, they yeah. have since moved out of town, but for quite a while, many of the siblings were living in town. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, but they've gotten older and... Yeah, moved yeah. And interesting, very interesting. Yeah. I know the name Remby. I have to think about it. If it's like, wait a minute, I know that yeah. name. Yeah. Well, now I know you. Yeah. Yeah. She used to take in sewing, too. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, we've talked for quite a bit, and you've given, you've given us, shared some interesting information with us. And I bet when we stop talking, you'll think of all so kinds of things that you, yeah. that you wished you said. Um, I know. I've, I've been very happy up here. It's a very, very pretty town, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I like this nice. open space, yeah. Very excellent school system, excellent school system. That's why I lived in Upton for a few years when I was first married, and I really wanted to get back into town because the schools were so good here. So I think that's what's drawing. So many people, new people, are coming in. Absolutely. Um, you know, with because of the schools, or mm -hmm. at least the information about the schools. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much. Oh, we really, really appreciate it. <laughs> and, um, Anything out of us. Yeah, it was terrific to talk to you. So this concludes today the interview with Carolyn Holmes and Gail Remby of Ash Street. So thank you very much. Thank you.